multiplying both sides by negative one, if you trust the Peano axioms and the extensions of the natural numbers to the integers, you know that this is not equal to zero. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. I know we have talked about the basic problem several times before. We have found out a lot of <laughs> integral representations of the basic problem. We have used Fourier series to find out the actual value of this infinite series right here. But today we want to do it how Daddy Euler did it. I was introducing something more formally using Fourier series be before using the mittag leffler series expansion for the cotangent and blah blah blah. Take a look into the description, there will be a link to the corresponding videos. But now I want to do it more heuristically so that you can understand step by step and you will see that it's going to evaluate to exactly the result that we have derived, I would say, rigorously before. Let us go ahead and get started. For this, I would like to take a look at the sine of x. Okay, simply our good old boy, the sine function. We have found out that there is a Taylor series for this thing, but what I would like to do is I would like to turn this into an infinite product. Something really powerful, it's pretty cool dealing with products because, well, you can put stuff in between product parts. Also, this thing right here is kind of an infinite polynomial with an infinite radius of convergence. And this thing also had, it has infinitely many zeros. So if you take a look at the graph of the sine function, you might notice something curious. The sine function looks something like this right here, okay? I hope you agree with me that it's something like this. And you see, we have a zero at zero. We have a zero at pi. We have a zero at two pi. Also, we have a zero at, well, negative pi, negative two pi, and so on. Overall, we have zeros at every, well, k times pi, where k is element of the integers, positive and negative. Okay, this is how our sine function looks like. And well, Daddy Euler lived in a time where mathematical rigor wasn't really a great deal. So they were more doing it using their instinct. Okay, so they just saw something and said, yeah, well, it has to be this way. It just has to be. So they really didn't care about mathematical rigor too much. So he just said, well, if we take a look at a polynomial, for example, so let's just Take a simple one, okay, f of x is equal to, I don't know, x squared minus one, okay? Well, we, we can factor this thing right here into x plus one times x minus one. I hope you agree with me that we can do this. And the cool thing is, this thing right here broke down into linear factors, okay? Also, if you wanna find out the zeros of this thing, well, if one into here, it's going to give us zero. If we plug negative one into here, well, it's also going to give us zero. So negative one and one are the zeros of our function. Overall, we can formulate this a little bit more abstractly. So we can turn some polynomial, for example, into linear factors, into the uh, product of linear factors. And they include our zeros right here. Another example, for example, would be f of x being equal to x minus x squared, okay? What is this going to be if we factor out the x? We are going to get x times one minus x, okay? You see, x is nothing but x plus zero, for example, so zero is one of our zeros right here, and also we have one as one of our zeros. Okay, that worked out wonders. We have turned this into, well, linear factors, those polynomials. We can do the same thing for our sine of x. So what we can do, well, we know that one of our zeros right here is at zero, meaning one of our linear factors is just x, okay? If we plug in zero into here in a product, well, our whole product is going to be zero in the end. Also one other linear factor would be, for example, if we would consider, well, positive pi right here, meaning if we multiply this by one minus 
x over pi. Well, you see, if we plug pi into here, this is pi over pi, giving us one, one minus one, zero, and voila. But the same spiel holds for the negative part. If we multiply this by one, minus a positive x over pi, well, this is negative pi, basically. So this was one plus uh, one minus negative pi, okay? Turns into positive right here. Meaning if plug negative pi into here, this is just negative one, okay, giving us zero and so on. And we can do the same spiel for the next zero. So this is one minus x over two times pi, times one minus x over two times pi, negative two times pi, giving us the positive branch once again. And since this thing has infinitely many zeros, we can just move on with this product. Cool thing is, up here we had the difference of two squares. I was using this right here on purpose because you see if we have x plus one times x minus one we can put it together into the difference of two squares right here. Meaning we have those two we can multiply it together to get x times one squared minus x squared over pi squared. Okay, that's just how it works. Then for the next factor we have one squared which is one minus x squared over, okay, this is going to give us two pi squared, and so on, infinitely many more terms. I mean, Daddy Euler just saw this. He knew what the sine graph looks like. He knew that at every multiple of pi, we get a zero. Well, let's just factor this thing right here. More formally, I think it's known as the Weierstrass factorization theorem. I'm not too certain about that. Don't take me by my word, maybe I'm right. There are so many theorems in analysis, <laughs> I just can't remember all of them. Okay, how can we put this into product notation? It's going to make things a little bit um, easier to write. Well, this is nothing but x times an infinite product running from, okay, this has one as the coefficient, two, then three, then four, blah, blah, blah. So k equals to one to infinity of one minus x squared over k squared times pi squared. <laughs> And here we go. You see, this is supposed to be a k. This thing right here is exactly what we have derived more rigorously using Fourier series. So yeah, we have derived this heuristically in a way you can hopefully understand everything. And now I would like to collect some terms. So for example, um, this is going to be some algebra, but it's not too hard. Why not take a look at the sine product up until the I don't know, third iteration, for example. Okay? So, sine, I'm going to put a little three down here of x, is nothing but, okay, um, we have this x term right here, then we have, okay, we are going to go up until the third term right here, or should we just go on, no, I'm going to go until the third term, just to make my point clear right here. So this is one minus, x squared over pi squared, then we have one minus x squared over two pi squared times one minus x squared over two pi, uh, four pi, no, um, three pi, oh, I'm terribly sorry, three pi squared. <laughs> Those powers of two, they make me dizzy from time to time. Okay, I just wanna make a little point clear right here because we wanna collect terms and there's also more formal stuff that you can use but I want to do it heuristically just like Euler did. Okay, why not multiply a little bit of the stuff out. So we are going to get x times, okay this is going to give us one minus and minus becomes positive but this is something x to the third, uh, fourth power. So I'm going to put um, plus o x to the fourth power. It's not a big o notation it just indicates that well we we have something higher than the x squared term right here. Okay, this is all this notation indicates right here. I'm going to put it as the tail later in the game. Then we have um, negative x squared over two pi squared. The squared is supposed to be on the outside. And also we are going to have um, negative x squared over pi squared, okay? This has been the first term and then 1 minus x squared over 3 pi squared. Okay, just collecting terms right here. Now we have to multiply out everything together. Okay, so we have x times. Okay, 
On this node, we have this term with one right here. So we have one plus O x to the fourth power. Okay, then we are going to have negative x squared two pi squared negative x squared over pi squared. Okay, this, is, this has been the first one. Now we are going to multiply this by everything. We are going to get negative x squared over three pi squared and I'm going to stop here because well all of those other terms if we multiply this with this it's going to be x to the fourth power once again so it's part of o x to the fourth power in this case and if we multiply x squared by this thing right here well it's going to be something with x to the sixth power so something o x to the sixth power okay so you see what we basically did. We have collected all those terms right here up until the third iteration. And I want you guys to notice something. If we multiply this by x, we are going to get x to the third power terms right here. Okay, what we are basically going to get is nothing but. Okay, so, so we have a certain tail, this and this and this added together is just something of the order x to the sixth power or lower, but without those x squared terms. Okay, I'm going to just call it t for tail. It's something that we have, we don't care about that. And also we have negative x to the third power over. Okay, I'm going to start here, pi squared. And then for the next one, we have negative x to the third power over two pi squared. And the last one, negative x to the third power over three pi, but squared. This has been our sign up until the third iteration, right here on this infinite product. I'm going to put it on next chalkboard because now I need a bit more space because we want to take a look at the sign of x represented as an infinite sum, the Taylor series representation. And all we really have to do is compare coefficients to get our final result. Now here are last few things to add. So we were going up until the third iteration of our infinite product right here. Why not take a look at the nth iteration? So meaning we are going to go up until some point n right here. So this is sign with little index n. And if we let the limit of n approach infinity, we are going to land at our sign function exactly. The meaning our sign n of x is going to be. Okay, by this pattern, we are going to have some big tail right here. We don't care about that. Plus, okay, I'm going to put a negative sign right here in front, okay? And now I'm going to put big parentheses right here because we can factor out a negative sign to get x to the third power over pi squared plus x to the third power over two pi squared plus dot 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 up until x to the third power over n times pi squared. Okay, letting n approach infinity, we are going to land at our sine function once again. We can put this into a bit more um, here nice term. So we can use the big sigma notation, for example, to turn this into, okay, x to the third power is a common factor. We can bring it to the outside, including this negative sign right here is going to give us negative Okay, um, x to the third power times big sigma. k, for example, or n in this case. No, k. k starting from 1 to n of, um, yeah, 1 over, okay, we are going to have pi squared all the time. And we are going to have k squared. I hope you can see where this came from. So easy peasy lemon squeezy is just how it is. We have put this into heuristic terms and now we are going to have it in more rigorous terms. Now I said I would like to compare this with the Taylor series expansion of the sign. Okay, I want you guys to remember that we can express our sign of x as nothing but the sum running from zero to infinity of, okay, this has been alternating series, negative one to the k of power, yeah, to the k of power, and then x to the 2k plus one over 2k plus one 
factory. Okay, so that was the odd part of the complex exponential function. We can write this out a little bit. Now I dropped my check. I'm terribly sorry, my boys and girls. You're giving us, okay, on the zero of term, it's going to be just one. Okay, then, oh no, it's going to be x because we are going to have positive, okay? This is going to give us one factorial, this is one, and this is just x. Okay, x, next term is negative. Negative, okay, um, x to the third power over three factorial plus da 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 something. If we collect this x with this right here, it's going to give us just negative x to the third power over three factorial plus some tail. Okay, and this is basically the same tail that we have right here. So no big difference there. Meaning we know that sine of x is nothing but this chunk, but we also know that our sine of x is nothing but this right here. And if we let n approach infinity, like I said, we are going to land at our real sign that we had right here. So overall, if we compare our x to the third power coefficients, okay, we are going to get that negative one over three factorial is nothing but. Okay, that's why I put the tail here just so that we can compare coefficients. It's nothing but a negative sum running from k equals to one to infinity in this case, letting n go to infinity of one over pi squared times k squared. Multiplying both sides by negative one, if you trust the piano axioms and the extensions of the natural numbers to the integers, you know that this is not equal to zero. Now we can multiply both sides by pi squared. Getting rid of this. And three factorial is nothing but three times two times one. If you trust the piano axioms and also the multiplication that you can define on natural numbers, you are going to land on six. Et voila. I hope it did make perfect sense to you guys. If it did, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. So this right here is just a really, really simple approach. Everyone could do that. Your regular third grader could do this because it's so simple. But yeah, um, it's pretty fucking dope. And like I said, we have derived this infinite product more rigorously before. Take a look at that video. It's pretty fucking dope. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Recommend the channel if you like and support the channel by clicking on those quora questions I post from time to time or by buying those t-shirts I created or this formula or you can um, support channel on Patreon. Whatever you do, I thank us for watching. Up until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya.